Now, what do you want to learn? You want to learn some basics of uh, Twitter search. And the basic includes uh, Boolean operators. For example, if you search in for tweets that includes two keywords, that you want them to include two keywords, like let's say you search in for tweets about root beer, right? So then it means you have to use the Boolean operator and. Well, what you want to learn is that you don't have to explicitly type root and beer in the Twitter search box because any space, any space between two words, Twitter will interpret as and. So that's why you just type root space beer and it will return tweets will contain all of the search terms uh, in your criteria. And so examples could be the root makes beer taste fresher. See, it's not a phrase because I did not put quotes to indicate that I want exactly phrase root beer. As a result, I do have a tweet root and it was root and beer, but not together. And then I have tweet, I don't think, I don't drink root beer. So both tweets will correspond to search criteria root space beer. Now, if we want to have tweets that include either of these words, either root or beer, they may appear to, to be together, but we don't have to have them together. Then we use Boolean operator or. So this is the case where you have to explicitly include that in your search criteria. And there's one more no, uh, point you need to learn. You need to capitalize or. So the character or R has to be capitalized. Otherwise, Twitter will think it's a search, it's, it's another search keyword. So when I type search for root space or capitalized space beer, just like on this slide, it will return tweets that will contain any or all of the search terms. The examples, this tree has a long root. It has the keyword root. Or I like my beer call. It has the keyword beer. It doesn't have the root, which is fine. This is what we were looking for. So this is like a super fast introduction to Boolean and when you use Boolean and and Boolean or. Now, in some cases, you will discover through this iterative process, this is not an assignment where you just put one search and you're done and happy. You have to iterate, you have to review results uh, on Twitter screen. And then you say, you may notice, well, maybe there are some noise words that maybe some spammer trying to spam these relevant keywords, relevant tweets. So you want to exclude certain keywords like buy, sell sometimes. How do you do that? So in search results, uh, in search query, you can include minus and keyword as a way to exclude messages that contain that particular word. So in this case, let's say we want to have all tweets that in would include the word root, but none of them should include the word beer. So we'll say root space minus beer. And note that there's no space between minus. So minus has to be attached to the word. So this query will generate tweets like root numbers are important in math. So there is a keyword root, okay. Or another keyword uh, relevant tweet will be the root of the problem. So it has the keyword root and it doesn't have the word beer, just like we want. So those are three starting points for you to build initial query. And then you want to ask um, ChatGPT maybe how to expand your query, how to make additional, um, include additional keywords. Uh, but you have to be careful because even in my own experiments, ChatGPT, it's not um, a tool that reasons. It, it, does, it doesn't reason by itself. It's a language model that essentially generates a li likely output. It's, it's quite amazing, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have that reasoning component. So you are the reasoning machine, <laughs> uh, we all are. So you have to kind of validate the output of ChatGPT by putting it through the Twitter search and trying to examine what's wrong or what's wrong. Um, what you will also discover when you're trying to build your query, you have to use combination of and and or. And I'll give you an example. Let's say we want to retrieve, uh, key, uh, we want to retrieve tweets about COVID-19 vaccines. And so sometimes people may say COVID vaccine, or they may say, oh, I got this vaccine you know, against coronavirus. Um, so, so you want to say any tweets that in, would include the word vaccine 
and one of the words like COVID or coronavirus. So that will be a more complex query. But what I do suggest, you modify this query to be a little bit more explicit about priorities. How, how should Twitter interpret this Boolean or operator? Because you don't want to end up uh, having a um, situation. Let me get a marker here if I can. So you don't want to end up a uh, situation where you have tweets that includes vaccine and COVID and then the rest of the tweets about coronavirus. So how do you flag that to Twitter? So you want to use round brackets, parentheses, like parentheses, like in this example, by grouping any keywords that are joined with or, you group them with round brackets so that you explicitly state stating you want to have any tweets that include vaccine, the keyword vaccine, and in round brackets, one of these words like COVID or coronavirus, you don't care, but both you will consider relevant. So that's why the parentheses are quite important. And I did catch um, ChatGPT um, produce some results incorrectly because of those parentheses. So be, uh, be on the lookout for that. The other, the final, I guess, point before I show you my dialogue with ChatGPT as a way to demonstrate what I expect you do for lab number one. The final point here, oh, and by the way, you can see that in my final test query here, I dropped the capitalized end because, like I said, any space Twitter will interpret as end. So it was a bit of redundant. But what I want to note here that if you search for words like COVID, coronavirus, vaccine, it's Twitter will also match any hashtags, any hashtags that includes that keyword. So if you search vaccine and either COVID or coronavirus, like I show you here, these three tweets will be relevant or Twitter will think they are relevant. Even though the coronavirus and the vaccine in the first example were used as a hashtag and same for other ones, except the last one. So that's something to keep in mind. So if you okay, or if you want to include tweets that includes a particular keywords as a keyword and as and as a hashtag, you don't need to double it. You don't need to say COVID or hashtag COVID. You just say COVID. But if you don't want keywords spelling of COVID, you want to explicitly state hashtag COVID. Do you see the difference? Another important element that is often poorly documented when you search on Twitter, Twitter and somebody shared a, a, a news story, a news story from a website. So what Twitter does, it captures a brief description of that news story. Any published news stories or blog will have like a brief uh, abstract sort of saying for that, what, what's in this story. And Twitter captures that. So in the example, Number two and three, uh, Twitter will show you a screenshot from that website if somebody shares a link and a description that pulled from that story. So if any of your search keywords would match that description, it will be treated as relevant. So the, last ex uh, so the third example here, you can see that the tweet itself, the top of this tweet is the what user typed. Congress asked, uh, you know, um, and so on. But that tweet only has the word vaccine in it. There is no COVID, there's no coronavirus in that tweet. So you may wonder why that tweet turned out to be relevant. Well, when you look at the description that were pulled out from that news article, it has a reference to COVID. But uh, you can also notice that it matched not just, even though you had a COVID in your search criteria, it was a COVID-19. So essentially, any words that starts with COVID, it could be COVID-19, COVID-19, will be matched with this broader, if you just use that broad search keyword COVID. So there are lots of nuances. I don't expect you to know all of them, but I do ex hope and expect you will learn through some of those nuances by iteratively searching and revising your search criteria 
and looking what results you get from Twitter. Uh, so on this note, I want to um, show you my dialogue with ChatGPT. Something that you can follow um, in, in this lab number one. And you know, for your um, assignment one, when you're trying to choose a topic. So I wanted uh, to see whether ChatGPT can help me to develop search query to collect tweets about the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank. It was on the news uh, for a week almost now, and uh, there are lots of opinions on, on Twitter about this, this event. And so this is an initial query that ChatGPT gave me. Quotes, Silicon Valley Bank. Okay, so that's good enough. So it's the name of the bank. It's in quote, treated as a phrase. And then it says, and here it didn't use the round brackets. It would still work on Twitter, but as I suggested, it's always best to use round brackets to, to explicitly state any keywords that are joined by or. So it says, give me any tweets that mean, mention Silicon Valley Bank as a phrase and in, would include one of these words, either collapse or bankruptcy, liquidation or insolvency. And what I like about this dialogue that it will, uh, will also try to explain to you, ChatGPT will try to explain what actually um, this query will represent. Why? Because now you can learn. There is a filter that I didn't tell you about, but Twitter has, it's called retweets. So by doing minus filter colon retweets, like by copying and pasting this part, what it will do, it will find all relevant tweets that includes the keywords you have, but it will exclude retweets. For example, this is a scenario where you're only interested in original opinions. You don't want the people just repeating somebody's uh, famous said something about this collapse. So, but what I also notice here, well, there's no hashtags and we know Twitter is such a hashtag driven uh, platform. So I said, add relevant hashtag to the query. So I asked Chad Um And so what I did, it uh, replaced Silicon Valley as a phrase with the hashtag. So a couple points here. Oh, and also it added the word, uh, the hashtag SVB, which is fine, which is was used uh, on Twitter as well. So a couple of points here uh, to make. Silicon Valley Bank as a hashtag is fine, but I would probably wanna keep it as a phrase as well in case there are some tweets that mention it as a phrase rather than as, as a hashtag. So to me, it would be Silicon, quote, Silicon Valley Bank or this hashtag or this hashtag, SVB, which stands for Silicon Valley Bank. So, so this is the parts where it's helpful, but you have to be driver in this equation. You have to understand uh, these nuances so you can correct the query. Now I said, revise previous to collect only English posts. So uh, it's an iterative process. I'm um, trying to improve my results. And maybe in my research, I'm only interested in English language tweets about this event. And so what you discovered, the query is the same, except this additional filter added at the end, language English, look at this. And I, I didn't tell you about it, but now you can learn that the language column EN, since for English parameter, will ensure that Twitter will return only English language tweets. Uh, so far, so good, but I also wanted to include bank's Twitter handle, so usernames, because sometimes people may mention, instead of using hashtag, they may say at and then username in their tweet. That's a common Twitter convention. Uh, and so luckily, fortunately, in this case, um, ChatGPT had in their language model the Twitter handle for this bank. So this is correct. But keep an eye if you ask something like this for your topic, making sure that this username is actually exists. How do you know that? You copy and paste the username. You open a new tab. You go to twitter.com slash uh, that username. Well, actually, <laughs> I was premature. Actually, CVB underscore financial is not a correct Twitter handle. Hmm. So th th this is something that I didn't notice earlier, but this is definitely you want to notice it. So you when you search on Twitter, it does recommend users as well. And we can see that 
the proper handle will be SVB underscore finances. But then we go there, it's in Barcelona. So that's not a really count as well. So, so essentially this is the part of the lap number one where you are gonna be, like I said, the driver here. So I'm do SVB bank and I'll choose the type people. Um, so I'll have to scroll through this popular accounts, uh, Twitter accounts to see if there is an account. It's possible in some cases, I think this might be, no, this is open source decentralized financial model. So there could be some cases where account was blocked or disappeared. Um, so you, you might not have an option to include the account. But at least now you know if, how to include a Twitter handle. So you do at and then username. Finally, I noticed that um, ChatGPT made another error. It put these two or keywords in quotes, see double quotes, which uh, now treats it as a, a phrase. This is not a phrase, but from what I told you, we know that we want to put round brackets around the or components. How do you know this doesn't work? You copy and paste this proposed query to Twitter search box again, and then you switch to latest search, and then you have this chicken icon. You know, there's clearly something wrong, so you have to debug. Uh, well, I did. I tried to ask ChatGPT to fix it. In some cases, it will fix it for you. Not guaranteed. You're still the driver, so you're still responsible fixing it. But in this case, I said fix the previous query to use uh, um, round brackets to prioritize um, for prioritization, but don't use quotes. <laughs> it's kind of interesting to know that you can have um, not even full sentences, and most of the time it will understand you. It really speeds up the dialogue between you and ChatGPT. But it says it acknowledged that I'm right <laughs> and saying that using parentheses is a better way to prioritize search keywords. And look at this. It actually fixed instead of those horrendous quotes, it put these two keywords in the round brackets and it actually prioritized the second part. Wonderful. 